ranking as intended. Oh my god, I'm getting so much storage stuff done. Yay, data! I know I said I was gonna do some stuff in between, but, uh... I want to build a stronger base, and, uh, I still need some stuff before I do that. Mainly the AE stuff. Then I was looking through here and I thought, there's still some easy things I can do. Like make nature's compass. Obtain corals by sipping sand in a waterlogged sieve. Coral lava, when used on seawater, will turn into a coral block. Pure beak on a biofuel. We're gonna infuse some stone brick. With biofuel to make mossy stone brick. Gonna borrow the netherite mesh. Waterlogged. Now sand. Oh, I got ink sacks. Making seawater. I see what you did there. And use these on it. Coral block. Dead coral block. Hmm, I don't know how to properly get coral. This goes in here and I get fire coral block. Let's bring in here and then hammering it makes fire coral. So I just put it down and it does it just die? Oh yeah, it's dead. But when you break it, nothing happens. <laughs> Do you need silk touch for it? Let's try silk touching it. Alright, that did it. Let's just do this a few more times. Coral's gonna die. Poor coral. Don't want loud noises. My fiery bed! Alright, there we go. Structure's compass. There's also this thing I should make. Repair talisman. Make some covalence dust. Easy enough. Repair talisman. So everything is slowly being repaired now. Should have made that earlier. There's also the alchemical chest. Quest completed alchemical chest. I also need a mortar and pestle. There's the mortar. And a pestle. Make some ender powder. Make some iron powder. Cook it. And throw it in here. I'm gonna have to do it twice more. Or no, I won't. That'll make three potions, right? Yes. Or what? And make this. No, it needs iron sight. There we go. I don't think I need it equipped yet. Alright, so this thing is almost done. I just need dark matter for this. And all the modium for this. Let's make an ender tank. I feel like this will take a while. Infused hell shelf. Need to turn on quanta. So need some more stuff around the uh, enchanting table. Let's pin all this shit. Work through this. All these upgrades. Tank upgrade. And this list. Hey, <laughs> jukebox upgrade. That sounds like an important one. Refill upgrade. Make a blast furnace for a blasting upgrade. I have no idea what any of these do. Battery upgrade. Whoa, okay, I don't think I can make that. <laughs> can make a pickup upgrade. Which becomes a magnet upgrade. Make shiny foods. For a feeding upgrade. More sticky pistons. For a restock upgrade. Void upgrade. Make a furnace. Then a, make a furnace, then a smelting upgrade. Make a smoker, then a smoking upgrade. No smoking. Need a stone cutter, then the stone cutting upgrade. Sleep because I don't want loud noises and I want to burn my bed. Crafting upgrade. Pump upgrade. Filter upgrade. Deposit upgrade. Oh, blocks of iron. Stack upgrade tier one. Done. Dun dun dun. Just take a bunch of experience. Have to make the tier twos. It's tier two. I'm guessing tier three is blocks of diamonds. And tier three. Are you blocks of netherite? I don't have enough netherite. Advanced refill upgrade? That's not on here. <laughs> Advanced void upgrade. Get some more experience. Make a few hoppers. Yeah, because that's where the hoppers have to go on it to make it auto-smelt, right? 
Auto smelting upgrade. More hoppers. Auto blasting upgrade. Auto smoking upgrade. Advanced deposit upgrade. Need a dispenser. With the advanced pump upgrade. Advanced feeding, just going through all my diamonds. Advanced restock. Advanced magnet. Make a regular pickup upgrade. It's like make an advanced one. An advanced filter. Alright, we'll collect some experience. I got a good amount to complete here. Can't do you yet. Need some nether stars for that. So should I put some upgrades in my backpack? Crafting table. Sweet. Craft. Portable jukebox. I don't know what that does. Guess the rest of you can get dumped in. Running out of storage space. Originally wanted to do a bunch of AE2 stuff, but I've been doing everything but AE2 stuff. Because I wanted to do auto crafting. Storage is nice and all, but what good is it to store stuff if it's clogged up with raw materials and need to be crafted and processed and something and you're still stuck with having to do it manually? Auto crafting system begins with the ME pattern provider. The pattern provider holds certain items called patterns, which are programmed to hold some recipe that turns input items into a certain output. Up to nine patterns can fit in one provider. You'll often be making use of multiple pattern providers scattered all throughout your base, which is why it's useful to have a pattern access terminal to remotely access the contents of any and all providers on your wider ME network. So you need a pattern provider. So there's a pattern provider. You need a pattern access terminal. Because I can use computers to craft for me. Pattern access terminal. So now we need crafting storages. And patterns. Naturally, A2 provides its own way to dramatically speed up crystal growth, assuming you don't happen to have en mechanisms enrichment chamber on hand, which I do. Placing a water source block within a full set of five crystal growth will reduce the growing time of crystal seeds from 20 minutes unaccelerated to as little as 24 seconds. Or just a couple of seconds with mechanism. We need a crystal growth chamber. Done. We actually need six of them. Quartz fibers. Getting enough fiber in your diet. There's a crystal growth chamber. So we're done this branch, which I don't really need. Advanced inscriber, why? I just happen to have one right here. Inscriber. The advanced inscriber from our A2 things addresses a couple of shortcomings with the standard A2 inscriber, namely the restriction of inputs to be inserted one at a time and the sided restriction, the sided extraction insertion requirement. Yeah, I think those ones, the advanced ones, you can just stick an interface on a side and just get it to auto craft. Resonating crystal. When you're far enough into A2 and have a large enough network, it can get a bit boring having to continue going through the somewhat time pro consuming process of crystal growth and processor inscription bit by bit. Enter the Laser A2 add on. Laser A2 mainly provides some machines aimed at streamlining and late game experience of expanding your ME network by greatly simplifying the production of certain crafting ingredients. The first thing we need to get started with is Laser A2 crystals, resonating, resonating crystal, which is obtained fairly similarly to Flux, except with that it requires a diamond with some Ender and Skystone dust and water to make. Or an enrichment chamber, right? Ender pearls into dust. I hope I have enough skystone dust. Fucking 15k. Throw into water. Dust. And turn my magnet back on. And make these. Enrich. 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 Done. First bit of resonant crystal you make just made now can be used to make the first machine in the lazier A2 lineage, the matter infuser. Hooked up matter mode provides various recipes for some simple crafting materials within both A2 and various other mods. These recipes also have to be cheaper than the usual crafting recipes for their resulting material. Need a couple of observers. A couple of fluix pearls. Matter condenser. Check down this path too, because don't I need a molecular symbol? Yeah, I do. Patterns are what hole in an encoded recipe to be fulfilled by a pattern provider. To encode a recipe onto a pattern, the ME pattern encoding terminal must be used. Patterns can be set to hold either a regular crafting recipe, which will require the use of a molecular assembly on the face of its provider, or a more general processing recipe, wherein any input can be sent out by the provider into some other machine block or specialized processing plant. Need some more illuminated panels. Make a terminal. Make a crafting terminal. Then make an ME pattern encoding terminal. Also need an actual pattern. Now we make a molecular assembler. Done. Acceleration card? 
The acceleration card, depending on the device being upgraded with it, will either increase the speed at which the device operates or allow the device to carry out more operations in one go. In case of Molecular Assembler, a full set of five cards reduces the time taken for the MA to fill a craft from one second with no cards to one tick. Acceleration card. I'm gonna need so many acceleration cards. Before you can carry out an auto crafting job, you need a device to actually store the request itself along with any interim items for multi step crafts. This device is known as a crafting CPU. A crafting CPU is a multi block structure requiring at least one crafting storage block, optionally along with any other crafting unit. The multi block can be made in any size but must be a solid keyboard in order to form and function accordingly. I've played with this auto crafting before, it's great. Let's just make a 1k just to get the quest complete. There. Simple. Crafting code processing unit helps speed up crafting jobs by allowing pattern providers to either send items out to their connected devices faster or to work concurrently to make multiple required ingredients. The base A2 code processor provides a one code processor thread to assist this. You need so many of these. Crafting code processing unit. Download more RAM. Download more CPU cores. Crafting monitor displays the overall item being crafted along with the remaining quantity of that item still being crafted. You need a level emitter which finishes off something else. Crafting monitor. Then a level emitter which, conf when configured with a specific item and quantity of it to respond to, will emit a redstone signal depending on whether that item stored in the network either falls below, goes above, or equals a given quantity. This can be used, for example, to automatically switch certain machines on with redstone to auto-craft a resource when it falls below a given amount. All sorts of auto shit. Redstone card. Toggle bus. Enemy devices can be configured to respond to redstone signals when upgraded with a redstone card. A device can be configured to work only when powered with redstone or otherwise is needed. This behavior can also apply to entire sections of an enemy network by using an enemy toggle bus. This allows a section of the network to, on the other side of the bus to come online only when the bus is powered by redstone or to go offline if using an inverted toggle bus. I don't think I've ever used any of this stuff though. There's a toggle bus and a redstone card. Crafting card. When applied as an upgrade to any supporting device such as an interface or export, the crafting card allows the device in question to automatically send out its own crafting request for required filtered item. Crafting CPUs can be set to respond only to these requests to prevent taking up CPUs meant for player requested crafts. When the level emitter is upgraded with the crafting card, it can be configured to emit redstone in order to directly facilitate crafting by emitting a signal either while a crafting job for its given item is detected or specifically to craft the item. The latter would apply for cases where the only thing needed to give to make a given item as a redstone signal without even requiring a crafting pattern. This seems like pretty complicated shit. <laughs> Need more crafting tables. And crafting cards. So that branch is done. Now let's make the matter infuser. Fluix steel ingot. More importantly, the matter infuser provides recipes for two new materials made exclusively with a matter infuser. These representing together lead to the creation of fluix steel ingot ingots. Fluix steel is used to craft every remaining machine in the add-on following the matter infuser. The remaining machines. The pulse grinder acts as a standard crusher for various AE2 dusts. Nothing special in and of itself, but handy enough to delegate frequent dust grinding to. Flux aggregator performs in-world crafting jobs such as Flux dust and crystal production, effectively bypassing the process of growing crystal seeds. It also doubles as a charger for Certus quartz crystals. Finally, a circuit etcher is used to make processors directly from their constituent raw materials, effectively rendering inscribers obsolete. That sounds amazing. That looks complex. <laughs> Alright, pulse grinder. Vibrant quartz glass. I mean, there's a block of iron, I can make that, right? How many channels are in here? Anyway? One, two, three, four, five. Can you use mechanism coal dust? I'm also crush one stack of coal, because it doesn't take very long at all. Looks like I can use it, yep. Hmm. Fluix dust. This thing can't use acceleration cards. Oh, <laughs> it can use eight of them. Oh, this thing needs FE? Man, this place is a mess. There, Fluix Steel Ingots. I feel like I need more of these. Accelerate. Accelerate. Whoa, acceleration! That's okay, this thing has lots of capacity for, for FE. Alright, get some Fluix Steel. Yeah, I made a bunch of circuits beforehand, so... All I know is this thing, which I should have the mats for. Pulse Grinder. Fluix Aggregator. Oh, that looks complex. A charger? I guess I could've used the one that I have already. And one of these. How do I make the Parallel processor. Oh, okay. Universal press. Whoa. It's a combination of all presses and can't be found in meteorites. It needs to be crafted. How do I make this, though? 
It's a way to change the singularity is to pump water into a matter condenser. Singularity somewhere around here. Did I miss it? Oh, here it is. I mean, also provides solid wireless functionality, both in the sense of remote on-the-go access to ME storage contents or long-range and cross-dimensional network connections. So the first step for the former is to make an ME security terminal. The security terminal, as per its name, allows for networks to be secured from unwanted users by setting explicit permissions for access to the network. Specific users can be granted permissions by using a biometric card linked via right-click to the relevant user. Ultimately, a blank card can be used to set blanket permissions for anyone who isn't either the owner or already whitelisted with the card. By default, the person who placed down the terminal is determined to be the owner of the network and automatically has full control of the network without requiring a biometric card. I remember having to give uh, Mike permission. It's pretty complex. I'm glad I made a whole bunch of processors beforehand. Security temp terminal. Biometric card. Done. So this is the wireless way. Condensed matter. I made this already. It matters. Matter ball. So wireless expanding the ME network itself, the first step is admittedly somewhat unorthodox. The matter condenser is A2's take on the trash can, voiding any items inserted into it. When fitted with a storage component, however, the condenser can harness some leftover energy from the item being voided and store it to make two special crafting items out of enough concentrated energy. The first of these two is the matter ball, requiring at least one K storage component and 256 items worth of voided material. So I need a 1K. Hmm, looks like I need 8,192 items. Where's my alchemical chest? Didn't I make one? There it is. How much storage does this have? That's quite a bit. Stick machines in it for now. So much random stuff. Working with AE2 stuff right now though, so I might as well take those out. Wait, why do I have a second deep learner? Did I do bug something by accident? So I hear you want some cobblestone. Cobble, cobble, bitches! <laughs> Almost done. Just dumping fat loads of cobblestone into it. Oh. <laughs> you click on there to do it. Okay. Well, I guess I'm making 32 matter balls. <laughs> Idiot. Also, from my mob grinder, I got this armor, so... It's like... It's extra stuff on it. Done. When using 64 storage component or higher, the matter condenser becomes able to condense significantly more to produce singularity. A signal of singularity requires 256,000 items to be voided. That's exactly 4,000. See what happens when you throw this singularity on the ground with a piece of ender dust. You have to deal with some damage to the surroundings while you're at it, but thankfully A2 offers its own tiny TNT to minimize that. Make some 64Ks. I'm going to put this right here. Just start going. <laughs> I feel like that'll take a long time. It says pump water into it, so... Does each millibucket equal an item? I feel like that's not really any faster than the cobble. In fact, it's probably slower than the cobble. That's a bit faster. <laughs> Throw an ultimate pipe upgrade on. Wee! Energy! I can put this down here too. Wee! Energy! <laughs> I'm going fast. Let's make the rest of the components for that. A couple energy cells. I need a crystal growth core. That means another molecular assembler. Six of these. And a bucket of water. An elevator here, because I'm eventually going to build the base starting from there. Alright, crystal growth core. I also need a circuit etcher. I need another universal press. Or no, I just need the one. Three inscribers. And now I just need the parallel processors. Six of them. Or four of them. You got one done? Yep. Oh, look at that energy. I'm gonna make the universal press. So I need four of those. Complex parts. That gives us a circuit etcher. Dang it, I'm out of fluke steel ingots. We are back in the crushing factory. And more Fluix steel. There we go, Fluix aggregator. What's down here? ME requester. Is that a boast? Lazy IE2 provides the ME requester as a dedicated ME network device. The ME requester is used to keep up to six different items in stock in some arbitrary amounts by automatically sending out crafting requests to the network when an item falls below the desired amount. This overcomes the usual limit of nine stacks for an ME interface with a crafting card, but also allowing for high amounts higher than the 64 to be requested for an item in the space of a single entry. I have an ME interface. This mess, though. Singularities! Instant processors, that's nice. I need a couple memory cards. And the requester is done. 
So this whole section done? Yeah, it looks pretty done. I mean, a random MEK, ME1K disk drive. There's a fluid storage. Need more illuminated panels. Cutting another chest. Energy cell. Item cell housing. To make a portable cell. All these items. Applied mechanistics. Chemical storage. You should right click to get the housing back and the uh, the 1k storage component. What's oh, tiny TNT? Also, more ender dust. Burning bed. Oh my god, I'm getting so much storage stuff done. Well, this is complex. MEIO port. That's when you want to move stuff from one cell to another, right? Cell workbench. Allows for cells to be partitioned to all specific items given a whitelist filter. It also allows a cell to be upgraded with certain upgrade cards, such as the inverter card, which sets the affirmation whitelist to a blacklist instead. Cells can also be given a higher or lower priority by the workbench. Allow a cell to be the first to receive certain items until full, or made to wait for other higher priority cells to fill up first. Equal distribution card. I'm out of calculation processors. No, I had one left. Now I'm out. But that's okay. Because I can make lots more. And it makes it fast. Overflow destruction card. Equal distribution card. It's an upgrade for storage cells that pre-allocates a certain amount of items that can be taken up by any of which type. This behavior is comparable to something like a functional storage drawer, wherein each comp compartment holds a set number of stacks as opposed to allowing items from one's compartment to leak into the others and crowd other kinds of items out. I feel like a bunch of stuff I'm not going to use. The overflow destruction card is a cell upgrade that allows storage cells to delete voiding items of a type already contained within them. When, tr when, try when trying to move into the cell and the cell is already full. The weapons? There's weapons? Entropy manipulator. What does that do? Used on certain blocks, we will smelt them in place such as sand to glass and metal ores to metal units. If not, it will simply light a fire on the block. Make a charged staff. That's just for slapping enemies. And the matter cannon. A2 weaponry. So much A2 stuff getting done. Oh, we still have to work through all this stuff over here. Alright, this is done. Now we need quantum network. If you did that last quest correctly, you shouldn't have turned that singularity into a pair of quantum entangled singularities. These things are used to link together a ring-shaped device known as a quantum network bridge. When two of these individual rings have been linked using the quantum entangled singularities and jump-started with some AE power, an AME network can be expanded wirelessly on the other side of the bridge across either long distances or even dimensions. <laughs> singularities! Anyways, we're gonna do some shenanigans. Alright, let's toss. We need a singularity. Toss those in. Turn my magnet off. Toss those in. Cause an explosion. And we got quantum entangled singularities. And then we need these ender pearl things. Make two chambers. Oh, it was just, yeah, two times quantum link chamber. 16 quantum rings. We need dense smart cable. I need wool. We'll make covered cable. Then we'll make them smart. Lots of smart cable. Oh, smart, that finished off this. Cable anchor can block cables. Hmm. Like the wrench comes on both nether and surface quartz flavors and is a useful crafting tool to have on hand. Cables can also be separated without needing to be colored by attaching a cable anchor between them. Crafting using this knife can craft up to 50 times the same knife before it breaks. Can also be used to craft cable facades, allowing you to disguise cable within walls by covering them with the face of an arbitrary block. While some recipes are hidden in JI, you can still craft them by taking any regular block and surrounding it with four cable anchors in the crafting grid. Aside from crafting anchors, the cutting knife also has another use. Right click with a knife will open a smart GI that allows you to craft inscriber name presses. When given a name, these presses can be used inside of an inscriber to rename any input item with the name of the press. Two of these presses can be concatenated in the inscriber to rename the item to the name of the top press followed by the bottom one. Smart. Color applicator. Quantum rings. 16 of them. Done. Get rewards. You can use paintballs with this. You need so many different tools. And make some cable anchors. How do you make an inscriber name press? Working the knife open a smell gel allows you to craft- oh, okay. 
Scarlet name press. Working as intended. Done. All right, wireless stuff. First, gotta burn my bed again. I think it's only because I have it on hover mode. Wireless boosters. And a wireless receiver to make this. Access point. The access point used to open the network to a wireless access via a wireless terminal and has a set finite range depending on how many wireless boosters are inserted into the access point. I need wireless terminals. It's the same as a regular terminal, but wirelessly, go figure. It must first be linked to the network by the security terminal we made earlier. It is not linked to a network or it is out of either range or power. The terminal will not function. Wireless terminals can also be upgraded with energy cards to provide a larger internal battery. So make another receiver. Need a terminal. I need a dense energy cell. There's our dense cell. Wireless terminal. And using that, we'll make our wireless crafting terminal. Infinity booster. I'm not writing the Toy Story line. This is going to take insane stuff, right? Yeah, unobtainium. And nether stars. Alright, can't do that yet. So from storage of items includes A also provides a native way to store structures. Have to make some more drives. Because you need another MEIO port. To make a spatial IO port. And a spatial cell component. Spatial containment structure consists of a cage of spatial pylons covering in the, the volume you wish to close in a spatial IO cell. The absolute minimum in SCS requires three lines of spatial pylon blocks, one for each dimension of the space being contained. Length, width, height. Height. However, spatial IO is an extremely power hungry feature, especially when trying to capture much larger space up to 120 by 128. Having more spatial pylons included in the SC SCS around the desired volume will increase the overall efficiency, allowing you to use less energy to capture. Also, be aware that each individual pylon, regardless of its length, takes up one channel. For prime, for a large space, you may wish to build a dedicated network with a controller to fit all the required pylons. It's neat, but I don't think I'm going to use it. Make the pylon. Why did it say spatial cell component? Spatial has a companion device from the spatial lineage that simply functions as a chunk loader. When getting to an ME network, the anchor will force load all the chunks occupied by the ME network across all cables and devices, excluding subnetworks, as long as the network remains powered. Chunk loaders. And then spatial storage cells. Just use the 1K, right? 2 to the 3rd. And this is what these are what store dimensions. Alright, make a 2 to the 3rd. I need a whole stack of these. Dang it! Get out of- screw off! I'm trying to get shit done. Need 16 of these. To make four of these. To make one of these. To make the spatial anchor. Alright, what have we got over here? The ME knowledge plane can be used to automatically break any blocks in front of it and return anything dropped by the block directly to the ME network. As an added bonus, the annihilation plane can be en enchanted in the same way as a regular digging tool, affecting block drops in the same way as that enchanted tool would. This makes it ideal for processing ore blocks when enchanted with fortune, for example. Any added enchantments significantly increase the amount of energy used by the plane every time a block is broken. Enchanting the plane with efficiency will decrease the overall energy use incurred by all other enchantments, while the unbreaking enchantment gives the plane the chance to only use energy sometimes, similar to unbreaking on regular tools. Storage bus when facing some external storage will allow the container to be used as though it were part, part of the ME network, allowing items to be taken out from the container or inserted into a purely via ME. Storage buses can be filtered and given specific priorities such that specific items will try to go to the attached storage first, however will not retroactively move any filtered items through any, from anywhere else in the network to its attached, attached storage. More stuff that I usually don't use. I'll use export buses and import buses. Spits item in its wireless filter out of whatever external storage the bus is facing. The export bus cannot work without being filtered. P2P tunnel! It's a powerful system allowing for the transfer of items, fluids, and even more without the need for, the, for any intermediate ME storage. Right clicking on a P2P tunnel with certain items will attune the tunnel into one capable of transferring something, something else, such as items through pipes, energy through cables, redstone signals, and by, by default, even ME connections themselves. P2P tunnels must be linked to one another with the use of a memory card detailed in the next quest. So that's how you get, that's how you get like big dick channels going in your thing. Annihilation plane. Done. I'm gonna make a storage bus. It's busted. And a capacity card. I'm gonna make an inverter card. This capacity card allows a bus upgraded with it to carry a larger filter. Import and export buses upgraded with capacity cards can go from supporting only one filtered item each to their maximum nine slot filter, while storage buses will go from 18 slots to a maximum of 63. Let's get some more items. Loose being the fuzzy card allows a filtered item to be matched regardless of any metadata such as damage or enchantments, while the inverted card toggles the filter on such buses from being a whitelist to being a blacklist. 
and it's all nice and fuzzy. Fuzzy card. Make an export bus and a P2P tunnel. Information plane acts similar to the storage bus, but treats the world itself as a storage medium. In other words, it will place down any block in its filter directly in front of itself. It's going to be useful for situations where a block can be processed simply by placing it and breaking it with a certain tool. Get out. And then the memory card. Simplest of the two is to save various devices' configurations as wireless filters to be copied over to another device of the same kind. Second function is of a memory card is to link P2P tunnels together. When doing so, the P2P tunnel being linked will be assigned a unique ID which is stored on the memory card for further linking. Alright, memory card done. And done. So all that's left is the ones I can't do yet. That is a lot of random armor. Kind of stuff we got here. Plus luck. Eh, <laughs> cutting board. The rest is all nuke. Nuggets. I have almost a second entire bar of health. I'm gonna put this back down here. And there goes the ice. Which water is it? What was I making deep slate for? <laughs> Singularities. I'll sort out that equipment in another time. I was just blocking off the light here, that's why there's all these blocks in the way. Taking an experience dump. Aha, bottles of enchanting. I know there's some quests that required those. Like this dynamo. We need insightful crystal. Then make the knowledge concentrator. All done! Thermal series complete. Anyways, it's time to get some more scrap. Items, 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 items. Right, pipe upgrade things. More netherrack. I need more of these. Cause remember, I needed six blocks of netherite. Eight blocks of netherite. Because then I can make this. <laughs> more bottles of enchanting. Or more experience. And a linking tool. And make a storage controller. Need some blocks of quartz. Make some drawers. Make a storage controller. Which I probably don't need because I have this. And pistons. Make a compacting drawer. Make an ender chest. And make an ender drawer. Man, I need so many drawers. Alright, puller upgrade. Make a hopper, then the upgrade. Make another hopper. Make a pusher upgrade. Oh, this one takes two hoppers. Collector upgrade. Hmm, more bottles of enchanting. Get some more of that tasty liquid experience. Experience pump upgrade. That pretty much takes care of this. There's still this that takes nether stars. So we gotta go beat up the wither for that. Or I could use a generalized ender prediction. <laughs> now let's upgrade this to netherite. And my repair talisman will slowly fix it up. Because I need a netherite pickaxe to get all the stuff from all the. what is it? All the modium. First, let's get this refilled. And now let's head into here. So laggy. Uh. Obsidian. Boop. Let's run around and cut down all the trees. I hear monsters nearby. This frame rate though. Netherite Paxel, is it just like everything together? Should we try it out? It used to be these tanks used to be able to just click them and take out the levels. No, can't do that anymore. XP tap. Put a tap on there. XP! <laughs> and it slowly refills. Right, I should bring some more torches. Oh, okay, that's how it works. 721 torches in one stack. I'm gonna take a look inside here. Oh, that's a lot of ore. I mean, there's all the modium ore. What is that? There's so much ore up here. I'll take some more of that special ore. Hopefully no enemies will find me up here. Man, this is super useful. I hear you need coal. I also hear those, what is it, slime ball slingers? Whoa, copper! 
Alright, so there's a lot of shit in here, and I'll explore this later. So there we go, I got so much storage stuff done. But I'm gonna need it. For now, though, is there anything I can finish off? What's this look like? Whoa! It's a big chapter! <laughs> Ingot! Oh yes, exchanging gadget. I needed one of those. And this requires dark matter. Which I can make now. Make an antimatter relay. There, you can make dark matter. Make a ring. Then make that. As a method of creative flight. We done? No, I still need to make the compact machine. Oh, that's what I need the deep slate for. Tiny compact machine. Alright, now am I done? Yes, now I'm done. Hooray, tips and tricks complete! Alright, so so much storage stuff done, so that gives me the ability to store... make things really easy. So I guess maybe I'll start working on a base? But next time I definitely have to do some more stuff starting the Twilight Forest. Thanks for watching! Did you like this video? If you did, press the like button, leave a comment, and share it. You can press the left button to subscribe, make sure you turn on notifications, and press the right one to watch more All the Mod 7. To the sky!